Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to, I'm just showing you just a REST API demo and how we can use this API gateway. So before starting, just a brief introduction as I just uh, showed you in my previous video. It's a fully managed service that makes it easier for the developers to create, publish, maintain, monitor, and secure the APIs at any scale. So basically it is the front door for the application to access the data, business logic and all. So today there are different types of APIs are there. So we will be just focusing upon uh, REST APIs. I will be just showing you a demo example that is already there. So you can explore the different components. So let's move on to the AWS console. So here I'll click on the create API and you can see different types of APIs are there. It's a DP API for the build low latency and cost effective REST APIs with the OIDC and O2 features and all. And we have the WebSocket API, we have the REST API. Then we have this uh, REST API 2 is there like uh, this one with uh, accessible from within a VPC if you want, within your network if you want. You can use this the VPC one, but uh, if you want to expose it to the internet, you can use this one. So I'm going to use this option over here, import. So if you're having uh, a Swagger or Open API 3, you can import that one also if you want to create a new API that I've shown in my previous video, or if you want to clone from the existing API, that also we can do but for that you have to define the authorization parameters and all so i'm not going into deep into that later on once we have done with the staging and all that time we will after that i will make another video how we can have those things so for today i will just show you example how we can use the rest api so you can if you are using a dotnet uh, in the dotnet framework you can use this swagger you can include this swagger uh, UI that we are having that will convert your API into an open API 3 standards. So we can utilize those with the Swagger API. So if you see, if you go to the example over here, so we have one example given over here of Pet Store. So your first API with the Amazon Gateway. So this is a, we have a demo over here. Uh, schemes, you can see HTTPS, paths, get, and all those things, options are there. So a whole JSON file is there with all the operations being defined over here. Whatever the get post or whatever the operations that is happening over here, it has been defined over here. So I will not go into detail of this and allow headers and all what kind of headers are being allowed, what uh, methods are being allowed and what is the origin that is being allowed and what is the response codes also defined over here. So all the things are defined over here. We'll go into detail in the later videos. So what is the pre-flight request and all, so all the things are being defined over here. Now, if you go down over here, we can choose over here, a regional edge optimizer private. I'm just choosing the regional one. And fail on warnings, it will show you the warnings or ignore if you want to ignore it. But we will choose this option, fail on warnings, just click on import. So once you import this API, you can see over here, we got the resource that is our pets over here. And this is the pet store that we are having. And it is having a mock endpoints over here. So I'm not going to touch over here. This, so there's authorization none is there. API key is not required. So we have this get and post and the mock endpoint we are having. So if you go to this pet ID over here, you can see over here, uh, it is the methods that are being defined and you can test it using by clicking on this. So once you click it, it is requesting for one parameter that is some ID, pet ID. So you can see we can define in the form of the query strings and all, we can define a separate headers if you want it. And we can also define the stage variables like dev, production or test, whichever we want, but we haven't deployed yet. So we are not going to use this. We can also, uh, client certificate also we can generate and we can add it over here. We can also have a request body. So that is not supported for the get, but it is supported for the post methods we'll be having there. So you can see under the post. So we'll be having 
if we click on the test so it will be there so you can see request body so we can we need to pass those values okay so let's go back to this uh, pet id and then get over here so once you click you can see the options are also there so better we will click on this get so when you click on the test it asks you for the parameter i will pass it over here one parameter and then nothing to do just click on the test now this is the response that we are getting now request pets one status for 200 means it was successful latency 10 milliseconds response body so this is the body that we have got id one type doc and prices 249.99 and if you see the response headers origin star access control allow origin star and the content type is our application json a trace is also being enabled so this tracing is another concept is there uh, by which we can utilize you know uh, uh, postmaster in order to trace up to where our request has been reached so we can utilize that and these are the logs over here you can see request being generated these are all the steps method request headers request a body and all those things you can see the trace coming up and this is the value that we are getting and if you want to check with some other value you can put it over here pet id2 and you can just hit this test button again so you can see now it's coming cat over here now i will do one thing i will just click on this and uh, deploy the api and i'm choosing over here just a new stage i'm making if you already have made the stages we can make it but for the time being just we can utilize this description if you want to add uh, development any description if you want to add you can add it just click deploy so you can see over here it is being deployed we can create multiple stages over here you can see lots of concepts are there stage variables logs and tracing stage variables then sdk generation export deployment history document history lots of things are there so we'll be using this uh, url in order to access our api you can just you can see it's request for some parameters so i'll just open a new url Okay, something happened with my network. <clears throat> okay, some issues with my Wi-Fi connection, I think so. Okay, and so I was talking about this one. We will copy that URL over here. And a separate tab. Oops. Okay, let me open in a new tab. So you can check it over here. Pets. So I need to provide, you can see it is just a web page, HTML page over here. You can see the pet store API contains slash pets, pets ID and all get requests. So you can also use the postman in order to uh, create a new pet and all those things are there. So you can see it's a dev slash pets. So it will return you all the pets. If you define pets slash one, it will just turn you the specific pet. So these are all the things that we have. So if you go back to the APIs, so you can see the pet store that we are having. And we were using this particular get over here. And we already have the deployment already been done. Even you can make a separate deployment if you want. 
you can go to the stages and you can see we have the dev over here. So like this, we can create a multiple stages and we can have the versioning, different versioning. We can maintain the latest and different, different versions. And then we can uh, link those basically versions with aliases of the stages. So those are the stage variables that we'll be working with. So in the upcoming video, as I will show you how to do that. So I hope you like my video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.